Well, good morning. A little breezy out here this morning, but uh, it is Monday, February 26th. Uh, kind of got a little anomaly. I want to show you right off the bat here as we're starting to feed cows. Woke up, checked the pens, checked the barns, cameras and whatnot, black cows with Hereford bulls should get us nice black baldies. Well, I've got a red baldy calf in the barn and I'm so interested to see, I couldn't quite see the tag number on the cow, but I wanna see which cow had this calf. 523. So clearly she's got some red in her. Tell by this cow, she's got semitol ears. That's why I said, I know she's got some type of semitol in her. And then clearly there was a red gene in that semitol lineup because we have a red baldy calf after crossing a black cow with a Hereford bull. So we pulled that red back out of that, that gene pool. Uh, cute little bugger. Little perfect goggle-eyed red baldy. What do we have here? Heifer, great. Well, Jack really likes his baldy heifers. Maybe he'll, uh, maybe he'll want to keep her back and swap me out. But yeah, we've been having calves like crazy. Um, in about a 24 hour span, we had about 15 calves here. Big 617. Big 617, a uh, red baldy cow of Jacks right here. Well, she's right there. Of course she's waiting for feed. One of the biggest cows we got. But anyway, I think she's got a calf over there on the pile. We gotta go check out quick. Meanwhile, I'll show you the ration. Getting all mixed up there. Nice conventional corn silage with ground alfalfa and ground hay. Let's look here at 617. And I don't know if it was her calf or not. Judging by her bag, I don't know. We're gonna go check it out. So I thought I saw her licking on something last night over here. My camera's way up there on that pole. And this is what we saw. Just this tiny little calf. Now clearly looking premature. It is breathing right now. I just found this thing. He's, he's dry, he's clean. All licked off. Little bull calf. Looking like a baby fawn. I really don't know what the story is here. Um, yeah. This is gonna be interesting. Definitely gonna have to get this, wow. Wow, that's like one of those little dogs that would go in a purse. I really don't know what to tell you. That's extremely strange. It's like a dwarf. See if his mouth is warm or not, or if we gotta give this guy a little bit of milk. I wouldn't assume that he'd get up and eat. Yeah, he needs to eat. This calf isn't that old. I'd say it's about six hours old, based on when I saw it on the camera. That probably has a dwarf gene in it or something. I mean, that's really young. I've never seen this before. I'm gonna have to run it by the big boss, see what his thoughts are on this. Um, yeah, first things first, so we gotta get this little guy some milk. Just something in the system. You saw the size of that cow. That cow is huge. She's just shy of 2,000 pounds coming into calving season. Um, you know, coming off a of pasture, raising a, one of our bigger steer calves every year, 617 has huge calves, she's a big cow. That's a, that's a 1,750 pound, 1,800 pound cow all day long, year round. So to see something like that, that tells me something was, something is wrong with either that cat, you know, when it was being developed, something wasn't right there. It's supposed to be 62 degrees here today. And then immediately, this is typical North Dakota weather, immediately drop off down to a high of 15 tomorrow and negative temperatures after that into the evening. That'll be Tuesday and then rolling into Wednesday, same thing, like a high of like 20 and a low of like five. And then we climb back out into the mid 40s and upper 50s going on through Thursday and Friday. So it's gonna be a weird weather gap here. I think we're gonna have a surge of cattle having calves in that, which is always fun to run the uh almost the non-stop 24-hour shift because when it gets that cold it don't take long for these things to freeze but i'm going to uh 
finish helping Jack out here, finish getting these cows fed, and then we're gonna have to have a conversation on that calf. Again, this calf is maybe, maybe 35 pounds, maybe. He's gonna get a very celebrity treatment here in the Ranger. Most calves don't even fit on the floor. I got him to stand in here. It's a little bull calf standing up and he has strength yeah we're gonna get him the probably only do half of this I'll give him like the lamb the uh, lamb feeding size but this is the Opti Prime Colostrum replacement supplement for calves goats kids lambs less than 24 hours old so we're probably gonna go the kid and lamb feeding directions here on the bag Here's the size comparison of this calf and this cow. Unbelievable, I've never seen nothing like it. That calf, I didn't weigh it because when I fed it, <clears throat> when I fed this little steer calf, this little boy, I didn't want to uh, upset his stomach by lifting him up in the air and jostling him around. I mean, he already was uh, a little disorientated this morning. But she sniffs him with her nose and can knock him over. So here's our little anomaly calf out in the sunshine, stretching her legs. Our only little token red baldy heifer we'll have, hopefully all year. Hopefully not a lot of them are carrying the red gene. This heifer calf here weighed 96 pounds. It was not a small delivery. Those are power bulls, those Hereford bulls. Um, we use them on these cows. These are 2015 model cows, 523, but have been 23rd calf born in 2015. But, uh, so they've been around the block. They can have these bigger calves without any issue. And uh, yeah, it's kind of, kind of nice to see a big calf. Like I said, she's gonna be a nice looking replacement heifer, but I don't know what the market's gonna let us do this fall. It's gonna be worthwhile keeping back. $1,800 heifer calves. Guess we'll see. Let's put that right there. Stop, perfect. You guys can go hang out here. Go ahead, why don't you go first? Good job, all right. Now your baby, there you go. The dry sand, does nobody come over here? Oh, would you relax? You just saw her like yesterday. Oh gosh. Been together all year. Same pasture, same lots, same feed bunk. Been apart for a day, maybe. We just brought her up here and <laughs> she's up here for one night. And now it's a big remind me who you are again. For stupid. The only thing that annoys me about this is they really want to get into it. It seems like no one has any regard for where these baby calves are at. So that's always a dumb thing. You separate cows for a day or two, next thing you know it's back to uh, reminding you who I am and where you stand on this totem pole of life. And I don't care if your kids are in the way or not. It's all at war. <laughs> but I think we got our point across. Okay, never mind. Now if you bang that gate into that brand new tin, I'm gonna be pissed. So you put all that stuff up. Probably should just keep moving on here. Just move them on straight over to the west lot there. Like that. Hey, hey, hey. Up, Junior, you're fine. Why don't me and you just go for a walk over here? Here we go. That's your calf. Hey, you get the heck out of here. Get. I'm gonna grab 6159 as long as he's done eating. He's so close to this gate here. Come on. Come on. Get him over to the other lot. Yeah, come on. All right. 
two pair move. I haven't done a video on this tractor yet, but I bought this tractor this past end of summer. It's a 6130R. I got it all the way down in uh, Nebraska at Acres Equipment down there. Absolute joy working with those guys down there. Um, Derek from Acres Equipment. I believe he's based out of uh, uh, Omaha. I'm not sure. Don't quote me on that. But I got this one here in uh, Norfolk, Nebraska. I believe I pronounced that right. Um, not a local. But anyway, uh, yeah. Its job is a bale processor this uh, season. First time we get in the tractor. So I thought, well, what are we going to put it on? Uh, we, re we kept back the loader tractor, so Jack loves that on the feed wagon. Well, we'll just keep this on the uh, bale processor. It's got front wheel assist, the uh, mud flaps on it, both front and back. So kind of nice for getting where you need to go to bed straw. Uh, this tractor is fully loaded. It has all the amenities. Um, was kind of It's my first tractor I ever bought, and uh, I was hesitant to pull the trigger, not going to lie. But, man, I tell you what. Going down there, they had a heck of a deal on this tractor. Uh, one owner, it had 150 hours on it. Uh, the guy traded in two of them, and I ended up uh, getting a really, really, really good deal. Better than anything I could have gotten up here. And then to top it off, uh, I was hauling hay down to Nebraska all year long, so I ended up getting a backhaul and getting it hauled up here for less than it would have taken me to drive down there, get a hotel room, and check the tractor out. That's how cheap the backhaul was. So. I couldn't, uh, kind of all the stars aligned, but yeah, super cool tractor. Um, got the IBT in it. So one thing I really like about this tractor is the, uh, the timers you can set on it for hydraulic flow, hydraulic time, all that stuff. So the click of the button, you get your forks down on the processor right where you want them, or, you know, the timing of how long it turns a bale in there. It's, it's all pretty slick. Uh, I really like that, especially if we're running like the rake or if I put it on the, uh, you know, or Kuzin, or even if you're kicking out a bale in your round baler, all the timing of these uh, hydraulics, that's a, that's a slick fashion. Now you gotta realize, man, I grew up in a 4640 and a 4430 and all that stuff and the timing was your own hand when it came to running your hydraulics. So this is all new to me, man. I don't, I didn't have, uh, I didn't have any of that real fancy stuff uh, when we were getting started. I don't want to bet a lot of straw out here just because we're supposed to get bad weather and why waste good straw? And We'll put a nice little layer of straw, about two bales worth in here. The straw is not terrible in here yet, but it's definitely, you know, due for some nice straw, especially when you're going to have cows ransacking in here like crazy once the weather gets bad. So you're going to want to slow down the RPMs here so I don't just make mounds along the wall and just feed it accordingly. Have a nice even bed. He got a bottle tonight and she's got good milk so in the morning again if he needs help eating they're in the barn it's warm and cozy i'll get her in the calving pen right there i'll swing that gate open and she'll be good but i am going to uh walk the lot here now clean some stuff up in the office and call it a night for the time being i will be back to check uh probably around midnight it's nine o'clock right now <clears throat> So I'm going to show you the difference of about 12 hours from being borderline May 1st weather to this. Back to a regular winter wonderland. There's about 90% success rate on the buildings. I had a couple calves that were still outside last night. Um, no matter what you do, if you want to try to put them in or not. Uh, mom will bring them away, right? Because they're like, well, don't, you don't tell my baby what to do. I'll, I'll move it where I want. And that's the battle of this. And last night, we had two baby calves born inside the barn. I'm glad I had the barn, uh, you know, loaded up, I guess. Not loaded up, but I mean, I had, what, eight or nine cows in here. And nothing else calved out in the main lot, so that was good. There we go. She's a good cow, like I said. Give this cow a head. <coughs> oh, come on. 
much. Come on. As long as I get a chain there. Grab some of this good fourth cutting for her. See if she'll just chill for a minute. Here. And I totally botched that. There you go. Eat up. I'm gonna try to get this cap to nurse. She's got a good bag. Junior here should be able to reach it. At least she's getting that out of the way before I have to go down there and I'm in the splash zone. Did they suck on your finger? It's a good sign. Everything in the brain is working like it should, but she's not really sucking on my finger. I don't want her to step on his legs or his body or kick at us because he's a goner if so. So I think with her excitement, like he knows what he wants to do. He's, well, he's so tiny. But anyway, um, I think what I'm gonna do is probably end up tubing him again because his light bulb's really not going off and she's got a good classroom in here. I, uh, I'd say it's fair to say that like dogs sometimes when they have puppies that in a litter that you know, <clears throat> they know the puppy's not gonna make it, they lay on that puppy, you know something's wrong with it. It's like she wants to be a mother and she claims this calf, but yet she's kicked at it. She really doesn't care for it, other than just wanting to sniff it and be around it. Once we get this thing about half full, I'm gonna get a good belly full in them. Cause that's plenty for him. Come on girl, I'm gonna knee in this. Come on girl. But we'll, uh, yeah, we'll do everything we can in the meantime to get this guy, you know, continuing to work. Get him active. She's got a bad quarter back here. Just found that out. This quarter here's got a little, little uh, cottage cheese to it. I don't think you're gonna. I think that quarter dried up funny. Now this cow is a 2016 model cow. She's not a young cow by any means, but she's definitely not on the older end. There we go. Got that one open. Now the con to this uh, calving gate pen whatever you want to call it, the, the stanchion almost, is it's tough to get the other side. So, on a cow with a bigger bag like this, it's easy to reach across, but this whole time I'm one good kick away from having a bad day. And uh, you know, usually after you get milking on these cows, they calm down, they realize you're helping them. It relieves a little bit of pressure in the bag. But, you know, this cow is a really gentle cow when it comes to moving around her. But she's definitely uh, not liking me down here doing all this. Calm down now. So I'm about half full. I'm going to get a little more just so Junior gets a good amount of mama's claustrum. Because we haven't cracked in this yet. Yesterday we gave him two large feedings just to kind of get him back on his feet, get him back going. And now today I'm going to use the real deal here. The stuff with all the vitamins, minerals, the colostrum in this cow. And uh, really benefit this calf. Hopefully jumpstart him. Get that light bulb going. And maybe he'll have enough energy for the afternoon feeding, if not tonight's, if not tomorrow morning's feedings to want to get up and eat on his own. Now that's about three quarter. That's what I've been giving him. It's just over, that's just over two, about two and a half pints for a calf that's maybe 35 pounds. I have yet to weigh him, I need to weigh him. But I haven't wanted to lift him up too much, carry him around too much, jostle around his little, little organs. What I do now is I take this and I dip it in here. All this stuff is clean and sanitized when I get done. I always disinfect everything with the tuber. And uh, I don't like doing this on big calves, let alone something this small and fragile, because his all of his parts are a lot more delicate and smaller than the normal calves. But you know, you want to lay the calf down to tube it. I'll kind of show you here. 
I don't want to lay him down. From there, you run this in, and you want to follow it down the throat. You want to be above the tongue, and you want him to have him swallow. So, he must already got his nose kicked by mama. Got a little bloody nose there. Again, so strange to see a cow that claims the calf so nicely and licks it off so nicely and had it nice and clean to not wanting it to nurse. Because he has had the, the idea to get up and nurse properly. And then a squirm, which makes me nervous. Because you, <laughs> you can go down the windpipe and drown him if you go into his lungs. That's the tough part. So you got to get him to swallow right. There we go. It usually goes down just right when it's when it's in the right spot. Yeah. Now you'll see all this flow just right. All the bubbles come up, you're in the right spot. Like I said, pretty excited to get this job out of the way. You'll get a full belly, he'll be content, he'll be warm. This has got all the good stuff in it. Not that the class not that the classroom doesn't, that, that uh, Opti Prime. That's an excellent product, and actually, it's a really good go to product, but nothing beats the real stuff. So, we'll get this little guy all uh, fed here. Come on, Junior. Now you got, he's getting stronger. Yeah. Not stronger than yesterday. But we'll get him all fed up here and uh, bedded this pen, and we'll let him chill with mom again. Now, once this milk goes through his system and he starts peeing and pooping, and it smells. It'll smell like her, essentially. She'll smell her... Oh, there you go. Pull it out a little fast. It'll smell like her, and uh, it'll bring more of a bond, believe it or not. She'll have her scent through his body. So let's maybe have you stand up for a minute. He's chilly. You can start to see that little, little bit of a belly here on this calf. Don't take much, and he's, uh, he's full. Let me the top view. So... Such a weird thing. I never had anything like this before. It's new to me. Did this morning was we just fed right in front of this barn where a little bit of the sand is still showing. So they're out of the wind. They're out of the uh, snow. And that's where we fed them. They were due for hay too this morning. So everybody got a good meal out of the elements for the most part. The wind and the snow. But yeah, this is what it looks like here now. Kind of a kind of a a damper on our beautiful weather we're having, but we got away with it for so long, and now we get a taste of what a very small taste too. By the way, this is nothing. Roads are still gravel. The wind's been blowing it off. Uh, it's really not that bad out. It just sucks that it's cold, and you're playing in this stuff now. It's, drifts and gotta watch for some of these cows are gonna be taking around over here that's the thing you got to look for now it's the nice thing about the camera so we're not running back and forth all the time I can watch these cows via that camera if somebody wants to come out here and make their nest and dink around I can catch them right away and I'm glad I came out here cuz She's got hooves out. Perfect. Well, let's go for a walk, girl. This 63R. Come on, Mama. Come on. Come on. Come on. She got her hose coming out. Well, at least I was here for it. Come on, Mama. We'll walk her up here quick. I also forgot what it's like chasing a pregnant cow through snow. With the wind howling down your out of shape body <laughs> and breathing all it in. And so it's a new little game because there's only one of me. I want that gate open up there. I go that way, she's gone. So I'm a one man band here. Let's see how this goes. Now I got her up in this corner here. I don't want her to run away on me, but I think I can get this gate now. Kind of getting the hint. Starting to figure it out. So I want the gate to open all the way up. Kind of have it as a backstop. 
Come on, Momo. Come on, Momo. Yep, come on. You're doing good. You're doing good, Mama. There we go. There we go. Big save on the morning here. We'll just put her right in the middle of the back of the barn. She can have the whole midway. Do with a uh, cross with my line one Hereford bulls. So should have a nice baldy calf out of her. And that's where she'll stay. I'm gonna close this gate here. She can't roam on the door. And now I got the camera in here, I can watch her. Be the main camera in the center of the barn. Nice and quiet and warm in there. I'm gonna go home and warm up. Nothing better than North Dakota living. You guys, this is uh, gonna wrap up this long rambling video, this dissertation I've had on this last 24 hours or so. Thank you for watching, I appreciate it. We'll keep you posted on the baby calf. We'll keep you posted on how this weather changes. The slop that's to come by the weekend, it's gonna be 60 again. So a lot of straw to be bedded, a lot of uh, watching of uh, not only newborn calves, but now potential illness, right? Everybody gets a cold in, in this weather, this wet, cold weather. So we'll keep you posted. Thanks for watching YouTube and uh, take care. Have a good one.